Hello YouTube and hello Ninth Age Communities. This is Alex with Evershade Gaming bringing you another battle report. Today it's just going to be me against uh, Jason Shoop's award winning Sylvan Elves. Now in this game we had to use a couple proxies because we were trying up some new stuff so apologies if stuff doesn't look as it appears on the army list. And speaking of, let's dive right into it. So right here we've got Jason Shoop's army list. He's got a prince with light armor shield, cloak for that 4-up armor save. He's got a bow, he's a pathfinder, kindred, he's got that bow of whiskin for the plus one to boon and the fancy shots, and then the hail shot for when he wants to just unleash doom upon something. He's of course the general. We've got a chieftain here, light armor, cloak, shield, sure. He's got a bow with life seed arrows for that extra strength in that, like, is it two wounds when he's farther away? And then we go into the druid here. He's a master. He chose shamanism for this game. And he's got the heirloom, so he's got that great hereditary spell whenever he needs it. Then he's got Thick of Shepherd BSB. No surprises there. He's got two units of ten Sylvan Archers with just Musician Standard. He's got two units of six Heath Riders with, uh, looks like a standard. And then the Heath Hunter upgrade for those bows. He's got two Eagles for Chaff. Sounds good. Five Thicket Beasts with a champion for that Thicket Shepherd to hide in. Then he's got the Tree Daddy, the Tree Father himself, ten Sentinels, and ten Pathfinders to hold his characters. So, pretty simple list, I think, and then we'll go right into mine. So, taking a look at my list here, I've got a Beast Chieftain, BSB. He's got Heavy Armor, Raiding Chariot, Shield, whatever. He's got a 2 up 5 up. That's all that's important. He's got no offensive capability whatsoever other than his throwing weapons. So he's just there to keep his points, maybe get an opportunistic charge if you can find one. I'm not worried about it. Then we've got an almost naked Centaur Chieftain here with paired weapons, throwing weapons, Dragon Staff, Sea of the Dark Forest. He's just going to roll up on somebody and unleash the shooting. He's got that Sea of the Dark Forest for the early game protection. Should be pretty good. Then we've got a Centaur Chieftain, same cost. This one's the General. We've got Heavy Armor, Lance, Shield, Throwing Weapons. So he's got a 4-up. Sure, just keep it cheap. Then he's got the Crown of Horns and Supernatural Dexterity. I decided to go for this because I feel like even if I get that plus 3 agility on him, there's still stuff that's going to be able to go before him. And I really like just having the passive plus 2 agility. Um, I feel like it's going to give him a lot of fights where against some things that are maybe edge 5, 6, against like something maybe like Chosen Knights, he can get in there and do some wounds before they get an opportunity. It's going to be a really helpful, I feel. Even they protect me on turn 1. Going to the core section, we've got 30 mongrels with musician, spears, standard bear, and the bear of the wild herds that can pack up some extra punch. There was really probably nowhere to put them in this game, unfortunately. I wasn't about to throw them into some thicket beasts or anything, so unfortunately mongrels didn't have too much to do than just run forward and take objectives this game. Uh, then we've got 10 mongrel raiders, we've got 15 wild horns, uh, paired weapons, throwing weapons, musician, and another, you know, the same thing. Obviously, just for scoring, barely capable in combat. Then we've got 14 centaurs, full command, lances, throwing weapons, banner of speed, and blackwing totem. These guys are going to be rushing across the board, throwing weapons at whatever they can, getting in with their strength 7 lances after they get drunk. It's going to be a great time. Then we've got 11 centaurs, paired weapons, throwing weapons, banner of speed, blackwing totem. Um, Full command. Yeah, I gave him full command too, just in case, because they've got the, the character in there as well. So I'm going to be tearing stuff up with more attacks, just trying to get some extra hits in there, as opposed to the extra strength they got the, on the other unit there. So we got two units of five feral hounds as chaff, and then two uh, beer barrel giants vanguarding, getting drunk, coming in strength six. Got that one use catapult. I love the beer barrel giants. They really turned around on me. I was really skeptical at first, but they've proven themselves time after time. So, we played the ETC map 12. So, obviously you can see up in the top right there, we've got a building, then we've got some impassable terrain, a uh, cliff I think they're called now, uh, right in front of that. Just below that we've got a forest there at a diagonal angle. Below that we've got a, a wall that is placed vertically along the deployment uh, long edge there. Then we've got a hill there, uh, just left of that. Up above, close to where Jason's standing there, we've got a water feature. And then to the left, right in between us, also diagonal, we've got a field. 
So pretty evenly distributed, uh, maybe favoring his side a little bit because it's got the building you can hide inside, but at the same time you've got the hill for the extra elevation here on my side, so depending on your army, obviously it's going to be pretty even, and it's an ETC map, so that's what you should expect anyway, right? We've got our spells here, so I took uh, Druidism this time, and uh, I ended up regretting it at the end, but uh, it, it helped me a little bit throughout this game. I wish I had taken Shamanism, honestly, but that'll be for the next game. So these are my spells for Druidism. And then we've got uh, Jason's shamanism spells here, and obviously he's taking the ones you're going to take against an army like mine, and it uh, really helped him out, especially in the late game, as you'll see. So here's his deployment. Uh, we're playing the encircle deployment type with the breakthrough objective. So he's only got three scoring units in this army. He's got his archers in the left, his treekin in the center, and then another unit of uh, archers which he's holding there in the building. So he's only got two units he could be really aggressive with to take this uh, breakthrough objective, but he could probably consign it anyway. I mean, he's playing against beastmen. Come on. So anyway, just going through his deployment here. On the far left we've got some heath riders. Uh, they've got bows. Then we've got the uh, Sylvan Archers there with his Druid inside of it, his dru Druid Master. He was originally going to take uh, Cosmology, I remember, but he actually switched to Shamanism pre-game because he just wasn't feeling it, and I don't blame him because Shamanism really helped him out here. Then after that we've got the Tree Father uh, to the right of that. Then we've got the unit of five, you know, we've been calling them Treekin for so long I should really figure out what they're actually called. Thicket Beasts, that's it. Thicket Beasts. He's got a unit of five Thicket Beasts with a Thicket Shepherd BSB inside. So that is a hell of a unit to have to chew through, especially since he's got his forest that he plopped down right in front of him. And then he's got two eagles to the right of that. One is just hiding right behind that cliff there. And then a unit of ten Sylvan Sentinels. And they've got their poison shots, of course. And they've got a character attached to them. I believe this is the one that has the... Uh, the bow with the high strength shot the farther he is away. I think his, his whole reasoning was since he can be farther away with his poison shot since they're only looking for sixes anyway and he since he wants to be farther away with that bow shot they just kinda go together that way I guess. And then to the right of that he's got another unit of sylvan archers just sitting in that building and to the right of that another unit of six heath riders with bows. I didn't really bother picking an initial pick of my deployment because it changes around so much after vanguards anyway in this army list I've got the six vanguards so my deployment can change up pretty rapidly depending on uh, what my enemy does and in this game he actually just plopped totally uh, since he won the role to determine the uh, table sides he took the big center and then it meant I got the big flanks so you can see he moved up he got his scouting unit first he got his unit of ten pathfinders there sitting in the forest right in the center of the board with a Pathfinder, I think it was a prince, yeah, that, that's his general there, sitting in that unit. And uh, they're just going to be popping fools all day long. So you can see, uh, going from left to right, we've got my first sober giant vanguarded up right in the face of those, uh, those uh, heath riders. Then we've got another unit of dogs who just kind of uh, vanguarded out of the way. They were my first vanguard. I just wanted to be more conservative with him because I wasn't sure how he was going to vanguard and then in addition if he was going to want me to have first turn or if he was going to want it for himself because I've got that dark rain so he might not want to have to suffer that penalty. And then we've got the lance centaurs in the center there which just moved up a little bit. Um, I wasn't sure initially where the forest, my forest, the seed of the dark forest was going to go down so I had to be a little bit more conservative with them. Uh, then the dogs to the right of them moved up pretty conservatively as well. We had the uh, paired weapon centaurs move up right behind them so that the centaur chieftain in there who had the seed could put it down right in front of the lance centaurs and protect them from any early game shooting. And then we had the other sober giant on the right just go up as far as possible. Just try to like take as much shooting as he could possibly take. So anyway... Uh, moving into turn one here, I moved up pretty aggressively. He gave me turn one, because I guess he just didn't want to suffer that uh, dark range shooting penalty. You can see my giant on the left there moved up right behind those Heath Riders, so he wasn't going to get charged, and he can throw his beer barrel with impunity. And then we've got the five dogs moving up right in the face of that Tree Father to prevent him from charging anybody. 
We've got another unit of dogs who just moved up right in the face of those uh, pathfinders, so they'll be impeding some of the shooting if they wanna don't want to move around them, or in addition, if they try to move forward, they're just blocking that whole area for them. I move to the right with my mongrels and with my BSB, just to get them out of the way of that tree father, as, and as well as the thicket beasts, as they're going to be the, the main threats for this list, I feel. And then the Lance Centaurs move the full 18 inches all the way up to get in his face there. I wanted to get rid of those, those Sentinels as soon as I possibly could. And I was able to get within throwing weapon range with the whole unit there, so they are going to be able to unload in the shooting phase. The Mongrels just march right on up as they're going to be my main scorers for this game, since they don't really propose a big threat for the Sylvan Elves, and he's probably not going to dedicate much to them, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Um, then the other unit of paired weapon centaurs moved up hard on the right to unload on the unit of heath riders and try to eliminate them. And then the giant marched up to throw his barrel at those heath riders as well and to look at the building so that he can charge it next turn. Uh, in the magic phase, it was pretty you know, eventful. I just got one spell off. I think I pulled the number five card. Um, yeah, so I'd, all I got off was entwining roots on these uh, pathfinders, which is going to end up being pretty helpful as it uh, prevents them from getting any meaningful shooting off in his turn. And then in the shooting phase, I ended up throwing the barrel over here on the left flank at these Heath Riders. I dealt three wounds, they failed their panic check, and they just go all the way along the flank there, just run and way away. So that giant has accomplished his task for the time being. And then on the right flank here, um, I didn't even get a chance to throw the barrel with the giant because I believe it was just with my chieftain, the whole unit uh, shot as well, but there was only two wounds dealt to the unit itself, and they ended up failing their panic check as well. So the Heath Riders end up running away. They ran through the building, but obviously the guys in the building are fearless, and only one guy uh, had to take a dangerous terrain check, and he was just fine. So Heath Riders pretty much taken care of for now, and I got to even preserve the beer barrel on my giant on the right flank, which is going to be very helpful for later. And then the real shooting. Um, the entire unit of centaurs, including the chieftain, got to unload on this unit of sentinels and wipe them to one man there. You can see there's one sentinel left and then his uh, his cheap shooter guy there with the bow. They made their, their panic check, thankfully, but yeah, I really took down a lot of that unit, which saved me a lot of grief later on. Those poisons were going to be a, a pain in the butt. This right here is the start of turn two. So, um, the Heath Riders, he didn't make any charges, by the way. So this right here is the start of turn two. Uh, Jason didn't make any charges. He just uh, went ahead and rallied his Heath Riders here on the left flank, thankfully. He got that Tree Father looking at my giant, just in case I decide to try and charge again, which I, I probably end up doing. Um, then he moved his... Uh, archers around to get some shooting done on the giant. He moved his pathfinders, just moved them right around, ignored the dogs completely, uh, just to turn around and either shoot at the dogs and remove them as a uh, potential threat to the archers, uh, either to shoot the giant. Yeah, just uh, going to be a, a real big threat throughout this game. The thicket beasts just uh, moved right on up into their forest and are probably going to stay there for the rest of the game. He moved an eagle in front of my lance centaurs to keep them chaffed up, which is good. And then he moved his archers out of the building, which is probably the good move, just to save them for a turn and have to make me rely on shooting to take care of them. So he got them pretty well protected. And then he moved his um, his big bow and the single remaining sentinel away from the lance centaurs, which was probably for the best, because considering I'm still sober, I could probably maneuver around the beast and move through there to shoot him. But we'll see what happens there. So, in the magic phase, he gets off a big totemic summon and gets his uh, totemic beast right up there on my shaman. I was not nearly far enough away to negate that kind of counterplay, which is going to be really good for Jason, as we'll find out. Then, in the shooting phase, he's got just a few shots. Uh, he ended up doing five wounds to my giant here, which is good, but it's not what he needed. He needed to kill that guy. Then uh, there was no combat, so it just went right over to my turn. Top of turn two, I go ahead and charge those Heath Riders, and they end up panicking off the board. So that's useful for me, of course. I uh, didn't have anything to redirect into since that Tree Father was out of sight, so I'll just end up failing my charge there. Then we've got a bunch of Centaurs here who just went ahead and charged that equal to get it out of the way. 
Didn't want to have to rely on shooting and potentially maybe flub it up and have that guy chaffing me up for a whole other turn. And then there, there's, there's that failed charge with the giant. And this is what the board state looked like after charges and movement. Because you can see that I've got my wolves there just still sitting right in front of those uh, thicket beasts. Then I moved up the other unit to just stand right in front of the sylvan archers there. Uh, looks like I've got a wound off on the wolves by this point, so I think he might have cast a swarm of insects and just popped one off. But yeah, you can see on the right flank there, I moved up my paired weapon centaurs to chase after what's left of the sylvan sentinels. And they'll take care of them pretty handily, I hope. Then, in addition, I moved up the giant to throw his barrel at what's left of those archers up there. I kept moving the mongrels forward to keep moving toward his deployment zone. Made my march block test and moved my mongrels as far away as I possibly could. He needed 11 inches on the dice, and on 3d6 random movement, it's kind of a toss-up. In the magic phase, here I got the number 3 card, 5 and 5. I ended up getting the clouded eye totem for some protection off on the centaurs there. This was kind of crazy. The giant went ahead through his barrel, did some wounds, and caused a panic check in the sylvan archers who just ran right off the board. They, I gotta say, in these early turns, Jason's leadership dice were not doing him any favors, unfortunately. And then over here, he made his panic check after I threw a bunch of throwing weapons with just the front rank, unfortunately, at his sylvan sentinels, wiped them out, so got the points there, but the hero's still looking pretty good. Then over here, in combat, the um, th my lance chieftain general did no wounds to the eagle. Thankfully, the unit was able to mop it up for him, but he just made a complete fool of himself trying to spear that eagle on his lance. So this is going to be bottom of turn two. He went ahead and charged my wolves here with his thicket beasts, and he also charged my giant with his tree father. And you can you can pretty much expect how these are going to go. Over here, he made the 11 that he needed to get his totemic summon into my wizard, and this is going to end up horribly for me. We've got, uh, he pulled the 8 card there from magic, uh, but I don't believe it was very effectual, because as you can see, we just went right into combat. And, uh, yeah, since at this point a lot of my stuff was in combat, and uh, he didn't have too much to shoot, so the dogs obviously just get evaporated. And somehow... He whiffs real hard to wound with his strength 6 on my tough 5 giant. He leaves me with one wound left, and I get one through onto him as well. So I, at this point I was only down by two, because he got the charge, a flank, and a wound, and I did a wound. So I was down by two, I was leadership 6, and I made the leadership not only to stick, but also to turn around. So that was pretty good rolling on my part, and it's pretty piss poor on Jason's part, unfortunately. And so at the end of turn two, this was the board state on the right flank. You can see I took out the eagle, and I just moved right straight forward. He had taken out the dogs and was looking down into my center of my uh, end of the board here. And we moved to the top of turn three. So in my turn, I just marched the paired weapon centaurs as far forward as I possibly could to give him like a 10 inch charge with his thicket beasts, and then I moved up all of my centaurs, uh, lance centaurs that is, in addition to the the paired weapon centaur chieftain to just unload on that character and take him out of commission. Then obviously just move the mongrels right up. So as you can see down there on the bottom, that combat at the end of turn 2 between the totemic summon and my unit, he only managed to do a single wound to my wizard because he was allocating all of his attacks to the wizard and then didn't do anything with his stomp on the unit, so he was I was down by three and I stuck on a five, that's right. And then going into the rest of movement, looks like he turned around on the dogs there and then looked at me. I just marched right on up with my paired weapon centaurs, gave him like a fifteen to charge. So I was feeling pretty confident that he wouldn't, and even if he did, I'd have my lance centaurs to counter charge after I dealt with that single character left for shooting. I had moved my paired weapon centaur out of there to preserve some points if he did charge, if he was ballsy and got a 10. And obviously the mongrels just move up as they're going to be doing their duty of taking the objective. And you'll be noticing that by this point I haven't been rolling for ambushers, or at least been showing them on the board, because I've been failing every single time. 
um, on turn two here, and then into turn three I got a one and then another two for the ambushing, so nobody came on until much later. You can see I just moved my BSB in there to uh, avoid any shooting. Then, let's see, this would have been just the board state at the beginning of turn three for me. Just uh, some dogs hanging out, being a nuisance. Uh, they had fled in the previous turn after tanking another wound, I believe from, um, from another swarm of insects. And they had fled and regrouped, thankfully, just sitting there in the middle of the board. My turn three magic. We got six dice and five tokens. I ended up with two left over. And we've got entwining roots on the pathfinders again, as well as a clouded eye totem for just the character, because I was worried about him getting sniped out. And then in shooting, I just wiped that character off the map with a under weight of strength four shooting and strength five throwing weapons from the characters as well. In combat here, my wizard and his unit folded to the totemic summon who ran them down. That's a big chunk of points for Jason and is a complete elimination of my magic phase other than the totems which without any kind of support are pretty easy to stop. And we had combat here. The giant finally folded to that tree father. Didn't do any wounds. Back to him and he just spun around. Then in his turn three he got the totemic summon into my BSB which was no good for me. And then uh, in the movement phase, he just moved his tree father over to probably shoot at the dogs and remove them as a nuisance. He moved the pathfinders up to unload some shooting onto my centaurs. Uh, got the eagle up to prepare to chaff just in case, and then moved the other sylvan archers around to shoot as well. In his magic phase, he got the number two card. So in his magic phase, he got a swarm of insects off on my centaurs, the paired weapon ones on the flank there. And he ended up doing four wounds, and I saved all of them. I felt pretty proud of that, as any kind of panic check there with those sober centaurs is going to be pretty scary, especially now that the centaur chieftain is left. However, in the shooting phase, he ultimately does seven wounds, uh, I believe in just one round of shooting there, probably from the Pathfinders, and I ended up failing my panic check and falling off the board, which was not the proudest moment and giving up probably like 600 points there, but it was going to happen eventually. And then over here, the Tree Father unloads onto the dogs and just completely annihilates them. Over here in combat, the Chieftain actually manages to punk the Totemic Summon, and with even just his attacks, the Spearmen and the dogs didn't even get a chance to fight. He rolled three sixes to wound at Agility 4 and ended up wiping them out before he got a chance to strike back and do any kind of meaningful damage. But thankfully, my 2-up, 5-up ended up negating most of it. And this was the board state at the end of turn three. Start of turn four here. I didn't have any charges to do, unfortunately, but I did get my mongrels into position to just move into the building and hold there. And as you can see, I got my units of wild horns finally onto the board. One of them just moved behind the building, make sure it wouldn't get shot. Easy points for breakthrough. And then I moved my centaurs over, but I had forgotten to reform them and make them only six wide instead of seven so I could optimize the number of attacks I could get if I were to potentially charge those treekin, the thicket pieces, sorry. And then in addition, just moved on over the giant, an additional threat there, moved the centaur chieftain to the rear of the thicket beasts and to also the pathfinders, so he was going to have to make a decision whether or not he wanted to shoot that chieftain or the other centaurs, as I was willing to give up the 300 some odd points for that baby chieftain instead of the potential attacks I'd be getting in combat from the centaurs up against the thicket pieces. Over here you can see I got the other unit of wild horns on as well, turning up behind the sylvan archers, ready to unload with some throwing weapons there. In my turn four magic, we had the number four card there, ended up with two tokens left over. Uh, magic must have been pretty ineffectual because I just went right to shooting here. I ended up doing, looks like, five wounds, maybe maybe just four wounds to those Sylvan Archers. They ended up taking off. Like I said, his leadership checks were doing him no favors. Bottom of turn four here. He had his Archers rally, thankfully. He turned his Thicket Beasts to face the Lancers and have an optimal angle for him there, and then moved the Pathfinders over there to shoot at the basically naked Beast Chieftain. Pick up some easy points for him, but thankfully, like I said, saving some Centaurs.
He got the number six card in the magic phase, but nothing really happened. And then in shooting, just went ahead and unloaded on that beast chieftain, took him right out, no problem. Then top of turn five, we had the wild horns try and make a 15 inch charge on those sylvan archers and fail. They're probably just going to get run over by that tree father now, but it was an opportunity where I could have picked up a big portion of points if I had managed to get that charge off, and since I'm only losing 250 anyway, I'm not too worried about it. That's where I ended up my fail charge, and this is where I ended up deciding to make the Lance Centaurs drunk, and went right into those uh, Thicket Beasts in the forest, as well as bringing in my BSB for some extra support on the side. In my magic phase, I got the number two card, had two tokens left over again, and I took some of these photos to show I tried three totems now because obviously my wizard was dead. It couldn't get a single one off. He was very good about his dice usage and even managed a couple of single dice dispels against my totems, which was much to my disappointment. And I just went right to combat here. So this was insane. I had the agility bump, so... I was going to be striking at least Simo with his Thicket Shepherd, so all of my Lance guys were going to get to go. And I roll eight ones to wound. On strength seven against his tough five, it was not my proudest moment, unfortunately. He would have meant a lot more ward saves he would have had to make, a lot more attacks. Those Thicket Beasts wouldn't have gotten through out of my unit, but just wasn't there. It was not meant to be, unfortunately. And this is how we looked after combat. I ended up doing around... Looks like I did two wounds to his champion and seven wounds to the unit overall. And then he had my chief down the side as well as he did four wounds to my unit. So I was up in combat, but obviously he's stubborn in forest, so he was able to make his rerollable leadership no problem. And that will do it for the top of turn five. Going into the bottom, he just go ahead and charges my wild horns on the flank not too worried about it and he chaffs up my giant so I can't charge into the sylvan archers he got the number one card for his magic phase and got a break the spirit off on my centaurs which I am none too pleased about then in the shooting phase he just completely annihilates the giant between the combined shooting of those sylvan archers and the pathfinders just had no chance whatsoever and then in combat with the, the thicket beast there I believe I lost combat, but I was able to stick. Unfortunately, I neglected to take a picture of that one. Got the top of turn six here. I didn't have too much movement to do, because at this point I just had my two units in the corner, and then my centaurs in combat, and as well as my BSB, so there was really just not too many units left for me. I had the number eight card from Magic, but uh, as at this point I only had totems left. Once again, just couldn't get any off. I cast four of them, and all four were dispelled. And then in combat, I only took two wounds in combat, but that was enough for me to break with just the BSB. The centaurs held. Well, the BSB ran over the rock there, failed his dangerous terrains, and killed himself. He just had no will left to live after watching his centaurs get mercilessly maimed by these thicket beasts. Then in his turn, he managed to get both Awaken the Beast for, I believe it was Strength, and then break the spirit again on my centaurs. And you can imagine how well that goes. There's only a single one left at the end of combat. I roll an 11 to get away. But he rolls a double six. And those centaurs end up destroyed. So at the end of the game, he ended up with 4,336 of my victory points. And 2,812 was the difference. I only got 1,524 of his. Um, he still had a lot of his army left on the board. He still had all of the points there in his Thicket Beast as well as the BSB. He had his General and the Pathfinders. He had his Tree Father. He had one unit of Sylvan Archers as well as his Druid. He still had one of his Eagles, that's for sure. And yeah, so there was a whole lot of points in there I just couldn't get. And for me, all I had left was one unit of Wild Horns on one end of the board and one of the and the mongrel herd. They were still sitting in the building there, thankfully capping the objective. So even though it turned out to be a 2,812 difference between our victory points, which was a 16-4, the two scoring units I had in his deployment zone rocked it back to a 13-7 victory for Jason. So all in all, a really excellent game. Some improvements I gotta make to this list. 
Um, most of all, I really just want to change the lore I took. I really want to put Shamanism back on my Soothsayer. As far as Jason's list goes, I mean, obviously he kicked my ass, so I'm not really in any position to make suggestions, but maybe just try and introduce a little more focus to it, because he's got a really heavy shooting focus for sure in this, but he said he was right up to his bow limit. So I'm thinking he couldn't take any more shooting even if he wanted to. Maybe just put it in a different place. Like, if he took another Tree Father, for instance, maybe found some points for that. But Because, I mean, personally, I think Tree Father's the most solid choice in the book. Uh, alongside the big unit of Thicket Beast there, who just sit in their forest all game and are completely untouchable. So yeah, excellent game. I look forward to getting some more games in before Strength in Numbers here coming in August and uh, hopefully should be looking pretty good. So thanks again for watching.